Now that we've discussed some of the tools that we'll be using in Maya for modular construction, let's begin to examine the scene that we'll be constructing. We need to determine the construction and sizing of each asset. This will in turn help us to decide how to break up our own scene for the easiest and most effective layout and use. When you start examining your scene and trying to figure out how these modular pieces are going to fit together, it's important to establish how the pieces are involved with each other for the actual final scene. First, let's take a look at some examples from games that use modularity. Here we can see how different the environments are and how they're constructed and how they provide different breakout pieces and how they're created and assembled. It's important to remember there's no specific way or perfect or exact science to this. It's all relative to the set you're making and what you want the final results to be. So when you're looking at your environment, it's best to try to decide, oh, how can I divide this and make for the least amount of pieces needed to construct the entire scene? Remember, modularity is really important because it allows us to create the least amount of pieces for the maximum size result. Let's go ahead and look at a few images and kind of use these images to break down as to how many pieces we might need for a scene of this size. Okay, so I have this scene of the subway train here um, as to a scene I could be constructing uh, for my final result. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a quick layer. And in this layer, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick, some quick paint overs here. So let's say, for instance, let's just grab a color that's a little bit brighter to see. It's actually really good to do this as a first example as to how you want to go about dividing your scene. So when you're looking at an image of what you'll be using as a reference, it's a lot easier if you have a real world location because it makes it much easier to examine, to determine, oh, okay, well, this real world location exists. I can kind of use references from the real world to examine, to determine what my modular pieces will be. Something that's sci-fi or a little bit more abstract or uh, something that's kind of like not based on the real world can be a little bit more difficult to determine as you don't have a lot of real world context. That's why I typically suggest if it's your first time doing a modular scene, it's best to do something that's based in the real world. So you can use these examples and images to determine how many pieces you'll need and how those pieces will interact. So we've made a new layer here. I'm just going to go ahead and start to determine, okay, what pieces are I going to need for this scene? So one of the major pieces I see here is this two seat here. So this two seat here is used very commonly. So I can see it's used here. It's also used here and here. And again, we're not looking at color so much, we're looking at the actual asset itself. Like, does this chair also look like this chair? And if the answer is yes, then we can always do something to manipulate the color or how things are or mask something in. It's more about the actual shape design that we'll have to remember. Is that the really thing that's being re repeated and duplicated throughout our scene? So let's just go ahead and reduce those uh, arrows there real quick so we can kind of work more on this. Okay, another thing is we have this pole, of course. So this pole is duplicated here and a few other times throughout this train. Another asset we have here is the light here. Another asset we have is you can see that this piece here goes all the way down and it looks like it could be using the same material multiple times. So what we could do is we could just simply divide this into chunks that have maybe two panels on it and then a long strip of this. And then we could just duplicate this throughout our scene. So we can have this here, here, and here. Another piece here that's being duplicated is this kind of blockade that uh, covers the door entrance as you enter. The doors are also duplicated. So remember, it can be also an asset that is maybe uh, rotated, duplicated, um, in any kind of form or fashion. So even though this door is a mirror of this asset, mirroring is not an issue in the engine. So we can always just create one door, then mirror that in the engine, and then we'll have two. This will cause us from, this will cause, uh, is a much better result because then we won't have to create actual two separate doors, which can be a little, a little more painful. So uh, we also have this uh, panel up here, which looks to have this light attached to it, and some ads. Now remember, these ads, we can switch those out at any time. It's really about the shapes that we're looking for. This shape could be duplicated. It's also uh, replicated here and here. This wall here, this is gonna be a major piece. And without this prop that we could essentially add on top here, this could essentially be the same wall that we're using here. It could be the same wall we're using here. 
Now, there is a major differences between these walls and this window opening here. So what we'll need to do is we'll actually have to have maybe particularly a, uh, another mesh. So let's just say if we had a selection of wall pieces. Let's just do a quick paint over here. I'm just going to do image size. And let's just do 1024. And if we had this train here and we knew that the train was, let's just say, for instance, as an example, uh, 2,000 uh, long, length wide from top uh, from one end to another. And let me turn smoothing on so we don't get such bad angles too. So smoothing, just for those that don't know, it just helps to uh, keep the brush a little bit more uh, uh, smooth. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this here. I'm just going to do a new fill layer, keep it a little cleaner for you guys. Okay, so in this layer here. We have that. Train that we talked about. And let's just say. Let's just say this was 2000 length wide. I'll turn this down some. 2000. Beginning to end. Now, this is not necessarily the number. I'm just giving this as an example as to, you know, what if this is the space that you're using. So this will help you decide and to d divide the actual pieces that you're using. So let's just say this segment of the train is 2000. We know that if we want to divide this into four wall pieces, what we could essentially do is say, oh, okay, well, if it's 2000, then we could divide it into four. And each of these could be 500, 500, 500, 500. Or let's just say if our door frame we knew realistically was only 300, then we can accommodate for that in other pieces that we would make. So if this was 300, we would have to take 2000 minus 300, and that would give us 1700 left that we then have to divide how we want to. Let's just, let's just say we did have a 500 piece and a 500 piece. So that's another thousand reduction from it. That's going to leave us with 700 left to play with. So we might have another 500 piece and then we could have a particular piece that's just 200 and that would equal our 2000 total. So again, you always just want to think about like, how can I make my pieces subdivided enough, but also easily dividable into the total amount that I'm going for. So if you have a room in particular that you're working on, let's just say this room looks something like this. And let's just say this is your doorway here. You would know that this mesh is say, let's just say this is a 500 uh, mesh. And this mesh is let's say 400. And let's just say you've made a wall piece that you know is 500, right? We want to be able to reuse this mesh multiple times. So let's just say we wanted to use it here. So we want to figure out as we go along, how can we make sure to include the amount of pieces that we need to divide the room in equal measurements that allow for the least amount of pieces possible. So if this was also 500, this was 500, but we know this is 400, that means that we have to accommodate for this 400, this 500, and let's just say this was another, uh, let's just say 200. So 200 plus 500 plus 400. So that's 200, 400, 500. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 1100 for the entirety of the length of this wall. So this wall is 1100. So now that we have established that from these pieces, we now need to accommodate for that on the other side of the wall. So if this is 500 and we use another 500, then we then need to make another piece that is 100 so that we accommodate for those pieces equaling again 1100. So you always wanna think as you're going along, how can I ensure to allow myself the easiest and most flexible workflow that doesn't accommodate for too many pieces. The less pieces you use, 
usually the typically the easier process you'll have throughout the entire way you go. Now, one question that will commonly come up is as I'm dividing my space and dividing, dividing it up and figuring out how pieces are made, it's very common to, if you have a particular corner or a wall for uh, uh, a, a room or whatnot, you're gonna say, oh, it feels kind of weird because it feels razor sharp when it lands right here. It's a very common process to say like, okay, let's divide this room up like this. And let's just say this was 500, this was 500. This corner might be, you know, something like uh, 100 by 100 and 100 by 100. So this corner would actually be one mesh, and this would be one mesh. So now you're only using two meshes and you're able to establish the walls and the corners. So again, we would use another 500 piece here, 500 piece here, and another of these corners here. So again, we've constructed this entire room and we've only used two pieces total, which is really great. So this is the, this is the kind of things, decisions you wanna be making as you're going through your process of deciding, oh, how many modular pieces do I want? Uh, and so on and so forth. So throughout this process, something to keep in mind, the stronger your blueprint, or not your, not your blueprint, your block out, the better your results will be in the final end result. And the reason for this is the, the firmer you establish essentially the skeleton of your space, the easier it will be to work within that skeleton to add on additional layers on it, you know, so like organ, skin, all the additional parts of the human to make the overall shape. So when you create your block out, it's best to just kind of do some tests, see what works. Don't feel so timid that you have to be like, oh, I'm only gonna use three pieces or five pieces or six pieces. See how many pieces you realistically need to complete the space that you're after. Sometimes it can be very common to create an asset, realize it doesn't fit, come back, edit it a little bit, re-import it back into the engine and work back and forth. So don't feel like, oh, whatever you end up with as this block out, this is set in stone. This should be something that's a little bit more malleable and kind of workable throughout your process, but you should really try your best to get your block out at a really, really strong point before you continue on into your further into your process, as it will allow you much more easier to make decisions and mistakes at this point in your process, as you're just making simple shapes to establish the space that you're after. Keep in mind, anything you're making later on is gonna require much more time and effort to develop those spaces. So here at this point, we're only just making simple blockouts, using the least amount of time possible to create those blockouts. And so we were, we were able to make those mistakes as we're going along.